Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How you doing? What's up? So many things. Are so up. many things so are up. So many things. Nice. Yeah. It's good to have things up. Well, I have so many things that are up. I get up every morning excited for all the things that are up. So that's good. Yeah. All right. So listen, I have a little bone to pick with you. A bone? A little one. <laughs> Like a conflict bone? No, no. We've been in a couple of different contexts, like literally at our dinner table versus we were with a, a group of fantastic uh, educators and a professional development day. And then we were talking to some corporate people a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing that I realized you've said a few times, but I kind of want to have you at scratch at it a little bit. You keep talking about almost in a in a slightly annoyed way the concept of context. Oh yes. Right, because in several situations you'd ask a question and people are like, well, it depends <clears throat> on the context. Or, right. <laughs> like that's a lot of people's answer is context, context, context. So I think you should explain yourself a little bit on this one. Yeah. Why? Why context yeah. is a pet peeve of mine. Yeah, kind of. I noticed it's it. I noticed it kind of irritates you, and I'm context not sure. Context is irritating. Well, I mean, you know, in a clickbaity sort of way, it, context doesn't matter. <laughs> the reason context doesn't matter is because it's such a vague and meaningless term that people throw around as if it means something. And, and I think that when people throw it around, and people throw it around a lot, right? It depends on the context. In the field of systems thinking, they throw it around a lot as as a as it's like a blocker you know well it depends on the context well it depends on well you mean like it's a hedge i it mean it's like a statement that sounds like you know what you're talking about but the, but it means it's meaningless it's a meaningless statement because if you actually zoom into what context is mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't say it and you'd realize that it's that you're saying something meaningless well, I don't think most people think that they're saying something meaningless. Oh, I'm saying. sure they don't. I think what people are trying to communicate, and maybe it's a failure of the English language, I don't know. It's also probably a little bit of how they're thinking about it. But I think when people say that, they're like, well, it depends on the situation. It depends on what's happening around the thing that you're talking about. Yes, right. yes. That's what they mean, yeah. yeah. And in that sense, obviously, you know, I'm I, I'm saying this somewhat jokingly. Yes, it, yes. It's not like I'm I'm really offended by it, but but I... It's funny that you say maybe it's a, a language thing because it, the, the term context actually comes straight out of language, so I've, I've written this out for you. Oh. Look at this. Text, 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 text. So... Uh, so it does literally come from language. So context, you could think of it as uh, if you if you speak Spanish or something, con means with. It, context means with the text, right? So when we say, so pick a pick a text. Say this is a paragraph. It's got a period. It's uh, got an indent. This one. You, so you like this one right here. So yeah. this this guy right here. Okay. So there's the text. Well, what's the context that gives that text meaning? All the other stuff around it. All the other stuff around it. Well, this. what is the other stuff around it? Text. Yeah. So context is just all the other text. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So what's with the text? More text. Other text. Other text. Uh, so when we think in terms of DSRP, distinction, systems, relationships, and perspectives, DSRP is defining the context. So strangely enough, what DSRP does so well is build the context, but it does it in a very specific, tactical, detailed, not vague way. Because it literally distinguishes what are the identities that you're dealing with? What are the, what are the words in the case of a paragraph? Or what are the organisms in the case of an ecology? Or what are the people in the case of a network? It deals with the, those. It deals with how those people are grouped or nested into hierarchical part whole systems. Mm -hmm. It deals with the relationships between them. It deals with the different perspectives. So when we think about this little red piece of text right here, mm -hmm. what we have to understand is the context of that text is just other little pieces of text, which could also be the focus 
text. Okay. Right? So yeah. the text, so this guy over here, this let's call this number one and number two text. If one, when number one is the text, number two is part of the context. When number two is the text, number one is part of its context. So they're co-contextualizing each other. Let me slow this down yeah. a minute, just for my sake. Yeah. <laughs> Probably okay. everybody else's. Yes. He said, DSRP provides the context. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I can understand that. In this is in this case, this text yeah. is the context of this text mm -hmm. is its differentiation from all of the other text. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's grouped differently mm -hmm. than the rest of it. Mm -hmm. It also is related, obviously, to all of this mm -hmm. in many ways. And then what you just said is, well, if this is one, then this and this is two, then this actually has a perspective, like this piece of text has a perspective in terms of around everything around it. Yes. Is that what you mean by DSRP provides in the yes. context? Yes, yes. So if that's true, then what I think you're <laughs> implying, and I could be wrong publicly, is <laughs> because we're so dismissive of the context, we're actually missing some we're of We're missing richness. the context. We're missing the richness yeah, we're of missing what we are richness. calling context. Because we allow context to be an unpacked piece of luggage. Ah, uh, I see. Right? And then we just sit it there off to the side as if it exists off to the side, the context, which right. is this unpacked, unopened piece of baggage, piece of luggage. And we don't take the time to unpack it. And we don't take the time to unpack it and realize that it's the context is the is the system. The, the, all the parts of the system make up the context. So I realize that we're using a textual example here because mm -hmm. obviously context comes from a textual domain, but it's used metaphorically in other ways. But we could equally use, say, a Yellowstone ecology, right? So you might have a network of things that includes wolves, right? Mm -hmm. And elk and, you know, soil and uh, rivers and, mm -hmm. you know, trees, you know, what, whatever you want to include in, in this, in it's this system. ecology, yeah. humans, right? Mm -hmm. Et cetera. And, you know, varmints Pollut and pollutants. pollutants and whatever. Yeah. And of course, we can with DSRP, so we have the, our identities here. The identities have their others. They're, they're related in all these different ways, right? And I'm just drawing relationships for now just to make the point. But let's say they're related in all these different ways and we can zoom into those relationships. We can look at, for example, the elk's perspective on all this mm -hmm. system. We can look at the wolf's perspective. We can look from a tree perspective, a water perspective, a soil perspective. We can look from the human perspective, right, and see these things differently. So when we do DSRP on this system, the Yellowstone ecosystem, let's say, mm -hmm. what we're essentially showing is the context for every one of these things. Right. And the context for any one of these things is all the other things and the relationships and the perspectives. Just like the context for this text is all the other texts mm -hmm. and their place, right? So their relational place in the sentence mm -hmm. and their hierarchical place in the paragraph and and their identity meaning from the dictionary or from, and, and the dictionary d definition could change as a result of it being next to this word and after this word. So there's relationships going on that, it's a very complex network of things. Right. So whether we're talking about a paragraph of text or whether we're talking about a Yellowstone ecology, when we say context, it's kind of a lazy word. That's what that's what's sort of, um, I guess I would say, frustrating about it is it's a lazy way of saying, mm -hmm. you know, wh why not be more specific about what's missing? What's missing? And if, if you're saying the context, what's missing? Well, yes. And I think part of what you, I don't know if you're implying it or actually saying it is, if I say, if you ask me something about um, the human's relation, human's behavior inside of this yes. ecology, and yes. I say, oh, well, it depends on the context. Right. What it seems like you're saying is, well, that's me not taking the time to say, well, what is the yeah. relationship between the human and the ecology 
taking into account these other identities, these other relationships, uh, you know, the, the grouping in and of itself and the interdependencies. Sure. And you and you might even say, you know, oh, oh, we have to add history here because humans have a history and they and they relate to history and and, you know, something else. Right. Mm-hmm. Financial gain or, you know, whatever. And so they relate to that. OK, that's a fair criticism that something's missing in your right. analysis, right. that something's missing in the system that you haven't considered. That's a fair criticism. But just simply taking this this sort of lazy baggage, this lazy suitcase that has wheels because it's so big, you know, and it's gonna, and and calling it context and setting it off to the side like it's some thing, and not unpacking it and realizing that it's actually perhaps here in front of us or perhaps some missing items that need to be added right or missing relationships or missing perspectives or missing whatever that's a fair criticism it it kind of is a lazy way of of criticizing or it's a lazy way of throwing up barriers to ideas you're right you're like brushing a lot of the problem yeah you're, you're brushing a lot of the variables that could help you solve the problem under, under a rug. A suitcase, yeah. Or a suitcase yeah. with wheels. <laughs> the other thing is it seems like when people purposefully pull things out of context, yes, there's a reason they're doing that. That's absolutely right. right? And that, that's, that works the same in reverse. So this, the same people who kind of use the context as a, as a, a battle axe, mm-hmm. They, they will criticize reductionism. Well, what is reductionism? Well, reductionism is taking this relationship completely out of context, right? Yeah. So they take it and they put it over here, right? Mm-hmm. And then they say something about this relationship that if you is true if you're just out here, but when you put it back in its context, it conflicts with certain other things that you might say about it. But that's a trick to get people to focus only on the thing yes. you want them to focus on. Yeah. And and you actually don't want them to see the full picture. Yeah, like, or it, it, I mean, it's not all. It's not always like um, duplicitous. Duplicitous, right? I mean, a lot of a lot of research is done this way, and we, we yeah. criticize this yeah, all the yeah. time. And in the research domain, that a lot of research is done in this very. X causes Y experimental paradigm. And then we conclude things that are generalizable back to multiple contexts. And and you're like, well, not really. You you essentially surgically removed this this little barbell, this little relationship between X and yeah. Y. You surgically removed it from its context. And I'm being very specific about what its context is, right? Yeah. You removed it from its context, and then you say something about it, or you prove something about it. And that is another form of sort of the the reverse of ignoring context, right? right? So there's ignoring context, and then there's bringing context in as an unpacked right. l- luggage that, that sort of just gets in the way of real communication and real mm-hmm. synthesis and analysis or thinking, right. real thinking. So maybe what are the, I mean, I think it would be interesting to talk about the downfalls of that and the ways you can avoid doing that. You know, I mean, because, it, you know, there aren't many things that irritate you. Well, it just it irritates visibly. me because it's lazy, right? Like right. It's, it's a lazy form of argument. And, and it's so, I mean, you know, I forget who said it. F. Scott Fitzgerald or something said, said you know, the something to the effect of, uh, True genius or true intelligence is when you can hold two opposing thoughts in your mind at once and you know right. not go insane or something like that. And and I you know I want to I want to say two things. One is context doesn't matter, right? And context matters more than anything. <laughs> and that sums up my frustration with it because it matters more than anything. We should have a we should have a method for unpacking it and stop leaving it packed because it matters so much because context is so important. We should a 
be able to unpack it. And B, when we think of context as being different than just text, mm -hmm. when we think of context being this thing that is separate from the text, then we really fundamentally miss the miss the idea. It, it's not separate from the text. It's the other text and the way that text is organized. Okay. So when we talk about mental models equals information and organization, mm -hmm. organization being D and S and R and P yeah. patterns, the way that information is organized and the, infor the other information to any bit of information is the context. Right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you a little bit. I might actually yeah. annoy you for a yeah, moment. That's fine. I I gotta call it out. I I think it's very confusing. So I I think if I were listening to this, I'd be like, I get why I should be seeing the context. Mm -hmm. I don't get why you're saying it doesn't matter. I don't understand. It doesn't matter when you treat it like this. Why? Because a, it's packed and it's being utilized as a as an argumentative leverage tool. So it's being sort of used to say, I am gonna criticize your thing by just putting up a wall of context that has so much vagary in it that it, it, it's effectively meaningless. Mm -hmm. Or it's being used incorrectly to say that it's somehow different than the text. It is the text. It's the other text. That's the context. <laughs> yeah. I get it's that. not a separate thing that is not text. It's the it's the information and the organization. So why doesn't it matter? It doesn't matter when it's used like this, like a like a unpacked baggage. Because you're acknowledging that it's there. I, I'm just saying the way that it's being utilized, mm -hmm. somewhat manipulatively sometimes, and somewhat uh, uh, lazily, or and other times yeah. unintentionally. Yeah. And and the and what it is. Those are two different usages of the word context. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if we don't know the difference between those, then we're going to think that we're talking about the same thing and we're not talking about the same thing. Okay, that, let's start, th that has some legs to it. We're using the same word to describe very different mental models of context. And one mental model is this. One mental model is all the other things. Yeah. And so if I say I have a problem with the context for elk, mm -hmm. then what I'm technically saying is you're missing some dis critical distinctions. You're missing some relationships. You've mm -hmm. organized things in part whole structure in a way that I disagree with, or you're missing some critical perspectives. And that would be a totally legitimate criticism. That's one way of thinking. Yeah, of the other way is there's this sort of vague, yeah. magical, mystical thing we call context mm -hmm. because we never unpack it. We never really know what's in the suitcase. Right. The suitcase sits off to the side of the system. It's mm -hmm. not part it's not part and parcel of the system. It's right. it's divorced from divorced it. from or an umbrella to the system as if it's sitting above the system. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It is, it's not sitting outside the system. It's inside the system. But we're pretending it's not. And it's not packed. It's unpacked. So what are the downstream effects of that? Stupidity. Generally, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I... I mean, I don't mean stupidity like uh, unreconcilable, unalterable, <laughs> un... Temporary situational Temporary stu stupidity. situational stupidity, yeah. But that's... Th but what I'm trying to get at is that's born from... That's born from not seeing the whole picture. Not seeing the whole picture in a moment where you're trying to understand one part and, and not taking the time to unpack... Yeah, think of it this oh, way. Let's stuff. let's say that I wanted let's let's come at this from a different angle. All right. Let's say that I wanted a universal argumentation tool. I wanted to design like a like a like an app or a, a like a technology mm -hmm. that would allow me to appear intelligent in any situation with any argument. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I designed a word which was Zablurfitude. Zablurfitude. Right? Zablurfitude. 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 Right? <laughs> and anytime that word was used, I could attach it to anything you were saying. Mm -hmm. I could say, 
Yeah, you make some good points, but I think you're missing the superfluitude. And everybody would be like, oh, oh. wow, the missing superfluitude. He's smart. He knows what Interesting. That is, yeah. yeah, I think I am missing the superfluitude. That's a good point. And then when you say, well, what, what, what is the missing superfluitude? Mm -hmm. And they just describe text. Mm -hmm. Or they just describe, I, I think you should add, you know, marmots. Yeah. Or I think you've missed the relationship between marmots and elk. Or I think you're not taking a perspective that needs to be taken. Right? Yeah. Or I think you're falsely labeling trees because there's, you know, multiple kinds of trees or something like right, that. Right. Or, right? Yeah. Or I think you should just group it in terms of flora and fauna instead of separating out the, the organisms. Right? Right. So That's somebody's, a part whole grouping. Yeah. So that person is able to answer what they mean by superfluitude. Yeah, but, but superfluitude never gets the answer. It always is just like, well, I just think you're missing superfluitude. Meaning nobody ever questions what that is. Yeah, then it sits outside the system. Because, because it's a magic, it's a magic trick yeah. of argumentation and cognition where you sort of just say, yeah, you just, you're missing the superfluitude. Well, when somebody does that, when you're in a, say you're in an important conversation, yeah. you're trying to solve a problem that has consequences. Yeah. And somebody does the, oh, it depends on the context thing. Right. You should stop and say, well, wait, what do you mean by that? Yes, and what they're gonna what they're gonna detail is some other things that they think should be in the system. Yes, and that they should think should be included. Meaning they they're arguing with where you drew the boundary of the system, perhaps, and they're mm -hmm. trying to include more things. Okay, great, we can have that debate. We can mm -hmm. look empirically about whether those things affect that system and all that kind of stuff. Those are all kind of empirical questions that can be answered. But context takes this very mythical, magical ap approach, which is it's a universal criticism machine. Right. We just apply it to anything that we disagree with. And it has it has just what's it, what's packed inside of that suitcase is laziness and vagary. Vagary. Vagueness. Is <laughs> vagary a term? So that's my frustration with the term. And I you know, I don't expect everybody to adopt this 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 frustration. Frustration or anything, but Well, yeah, I don't think it's about that. I think it's about I mean, you and I talk a lot and done a lot of research on shortcomings in human thinking. Mm -hmm. Places where our thinking breaks down commonly and statistically across people. Yes. And, you know, um, observationally, we have seen that this is something that a lot of people do. They say, oh, well, it depends on the context, which sometimes in the moment seems like... Brilliant. It, it, well, it can seem brilliant, but also it can also be a moment where you think, oh, this person hasn't actually thought it through right. a lot. Right. Or you could also say um, maybe they haven't thought it through a lot or they don't actually understand the context. So they are brushing over it yeah. because they don't actually want to go deeper That's into right. the thing you're thinking about. That's right. So when we talk a lot about places where human thinking tends to be stronger or weaker, pitfalls and things, mm -hmm. This is another another thing to me that reinforces the idea that you have to purposely try to see more. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, context is like this. It's like we're living in a house, and we've lived in this house for generations, family generations, and all this stuff. And there's like a huge hope chest in the corner that nobody's opened. Oh. You know, and everybody's got like all these, uh, like they, they have all these imaginations of what's in the hope chest. And one day the whole family gets together and they're like, let's open the hope chest. And they open it and it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> but here's another thing that comes straight up. That's funny. They're like, oh, bugger. Do you remember in Fish Called Wanda? Yeah. They go all the way to the end and they finally get to the place they're trying to break in. And Kevin Klein opens the box of what they're looking for and it's empty. And he goes, <laughs> disappointed. Yeah, <that's> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole movie is yeah. getting to that moment. And they think there's something amazing in the box. And they open it and it's empty. Yeah. What's amazing is understanding the distinctions and systems, the part whole organization and the relationship and the perspectives that are going on 
in these systems such that you understand the the things in their context. That's the whole point of understanding systems. Here's the thing. There's a team of five people working together and they mm -hmm. just keep doing the context thing. Oh, that mm -hmm. depends on the context. Well, every single one of them has a different mental model yeah. of what that context exactly. is. So if you don't take the time for each person to unpack their and reconcile the differences between and among them, you're moving forward on misunderstanding Yeah. to begin with. Yeah, and I just think the, I, I completely agree with that. It's a huge problem. And there's something super cool about the idea that in, that this little guy who's just a node in a network, his context is all the other nodes in the network. Right. And all the other nodes in the network, their context includes that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And there's this like really dynamic understanding, including the relationships and the perspectives and all that, not just the nodes, but there's this really dynamic understanding of what context means that is so profound that it equals the profundity of what context should be. Context is not a static thing. Context, context is, is very, very rich in its complexity and yes. always changing. Yes. Which means we have to be paying attention to it. To the dynamics of the system, yes. the dynamic properties of the system and and the sort of that one guy has context in other guys and those other guys are have context in that one guy. Right. right? Like the, the, right. that it's this co-implying or co-contextual. It's not that there's text and context. Mm -hmm. There's just text. Meaning we demean we demean parts of the text by calling it context. Kind of. We, not demean it. We reduce its value. Well, again, I'm not I'm not fundamentally against the, the term context. I'm against the way that the term is being utilized. Right. right. So the, the it is remarkable to me that all these little texts operate as like individual little texts. Mm -hmm. You can look them up individually in the dictionary. Yeah. But when they get together, when they get together, yeah. and they're in a little text party in a yeah. paragraph, and they're like, Let's hey, you want to dance? You know? <laughs> the when they get party. together, they change each other's meanings. Yes. When they get together, they change the meaning of the sentence. So it's the yeah. together... It's the together that provides the context. And all of the dynamics of And the all context. the dynamics of the together of all the texts and all the partying of the texts. Yeah. And and so, so, so to see that as being outside of that paragraph, the context lies outside of the paragraph or outside of the ecosystem or separate from or different from or just a black box that we don't know what it is. Right. It just seems like almost taking something really cool about context and making it really kind of pedestrian. Yes. Yeah, so when we make it pedestrian, that's the case where you say it doesn't matter. Yeah, then it doesn't matter. Because it's just like an empty suitcase in the corner. Because we just turned it into an empty suitcase. In yeah. the corner that nobody and, and, but, but we don't think it's empty. We think it's full of really, like yeah. the family. We think that it's full of really smart stuff. And then we go over to it and we open it up and it's empty. Yeah. It's a vacuous concept. Yeah. What's not vacuous is all the dynamical things that are happening, the relationships, the, the part-whole structure, the perspectival alterations and dynamics, and the identity other interactions. That is dynamical, oftentimes fluid, Yeah. and it is, by definition, the context. And in that case, context matters. And it's profound. It's all that matters. All that matters. Oh, man, you're messing with Because it's heads. all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all of it. Context yeah. really, really matters if, if you see it in that way. But if you see it in this other way, it's kind of a vacuous concept. Depending on the context. <laughs> 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 okay, so... What, what does this mean? It means that we need to be very careful to think about how the term is being used. Yeah, I would just say if you're using that term, just just pay attention the next time you use it. 
and ask yourself, well, what do I mean? Yeah. What do I mean when I use that term? Am I am I imagining an umbrella that goes over the thing that I'm talking about? Am I imagining a, a mysterious thing that I'm not sure what it is that's separate from the thing that I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Am, is there any specificity to what I'm saying? Is, is it just that it's missing some elements? Is it just that it's missing some relationships? Is it just that it's missing some important perspectives? Is it just that it's missing some identity, other distinctions or something like that? Like, what exactly do you mean when you say that? Yeah. Because if you mean it one way, then, yeah, I'm I'm on board. Context is absolutely critical. Mm-hmm. And if you mean it the other way, meh. Doesn't matter. Meh. meh. Like, literally meh. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Huh. And how do you know the difference as a, as a person, just a regular person? How do I know the difference? I check my motivations for using the word, like my own mental model of the word, and then check other people's mental models. Yeah, you could ask, like, well, well so what do you mean by that? And they yeah. go, well, I think, you know, you didn't include, uh, I don't know, yeah, you didn't include moose. Oh, okay. Well, that's just that's another it. node in my system. <laughs> I'm Fair point. I didn't include moose. Right. But then you're building a shared understanding <laughs> of the context, which right. you can then move forward from. Right. But th- but that's that's like saying, I mean, think of if I was criticizing this paragraph and I and you go, well, I feel like it's missing context. And you go, OK, well, what do you what do you mean by that? And you go, well, if you add a word at the end here, then it's different, then it then it'll be good. And you're like, so you want me to add a word? Mm hmm. And that word is going to interact with all these other words because it's in the proximal paragraph. And it's going to change, subtly change the meanings of all these other words. Well, that's, wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's a cool addition. And that is contextual because that word is going to subtly alter the subtly alter the meaning of all the other words and therefore the whole of the paragraph and it's going to it's going to give you a different flavor yeah. right just like if i take a whole dish and i put just a little cayenne pepper i'm really changing the context right why am i changing the context because of the dynamics right uh-huh. well that's that is a meaningful Criticism, a meaningful addition, a meaningful kind of uh, analysis or clarity that provides something of substance. Right. And changes your understanding of the whole thing. Yeah. The whole system. Yeah. And understanding that 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 happens, understanding that 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 by just adding this or that word or this or that dynamical thing in here. Yeah. You can really change the the system the whole thing the whole thing yeah yeah whether it's meaning you're building or understanding or you know whatever it is that you're trying to understand or build so now that you've had a chance to articulate the source of your minor irritation in the moment you know why context why the way we use it in so many different ways is slightly irritating yeah does do you feel like this has changed how irritated you are now that you've no, sort of explained I'm still yourself? I'm massively irritated by it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I mostly just play around with it because I, I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm not really genuinely irritated. No, I don't. But I, I think it's like a blind spot that people have. It's yeah, almost like a, a form of bias, right? I mean, you said it earlier. It's, it really comes from our study of thinking for so long and seeing it be used in a way that is almost a form of bias or a a blind spot. And if we just know that, you know, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, if we just know that little blind spot or whatever it is, (laughs) um, then, then you can kind of overcome it very easily. It's not a big deal in that sense, but it's such an important concept. You know, yeah. context is an important concept, so we should take it seriously yeah. because it's important. Stop stuffing it in a wheeled suitcase in the corner. That is something. separate from the system. You're right. It right. is It is not only part of the system, it is part and parcel of the system. It is integral to the system. The context is integrated into the system. Yeah. 
So we have to account for it. So we have to account for it. Interesting. Integrated into the system. Well, I think you've certainly explained yourself. Have I? Okay. Yes, and I appreciate it because it was something that was kind of in the back of my mind to ask you about. And of course, I wait until we're on camera to ask you about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the difference between these two things, these different things, is very helpful. And I think, I, mean, I think in general, we should be very purposefully listening for and trying to rectify sort of the inherent weaknesses of how we all think collectively and start challenging ourselves. So when somebody says, oh, it depends on the context, remind yourself, well, what does that mean to that person? And yeah. ask them Yeah. and then relate it to what you would mean by that. Because I think that's where a lot of the misunderstanding is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, another way of thinking about it is that DSRP gives us the science of context. Oh, I like that. You know, it, it literally gives us the science of context. Yeah. And so to say sort of context and not unpack that bag of science is sort of like, wow, you're just missing out on so much cool stuff. Yeah. So you need to unpack it. Yeah, you got to unpack it. I think that's good. And you got to unpack it in the system, not outside of the system. Because it lives in there. Because it lives in the system. Right. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap. That is a wrap. I, I think you've answered my question beautifully, and I appreciate it. Great. Hopefully the rest of you do Hopefully. too. Um, this is that moment where I'm going like. to tell you, yeah, like, subscribe, subscribe, download. Download, it really helps us out. And thank you for all of your time and attention. And then, oh, we want to People have been you. asking about the, um, about if there if there's places where you can go learn it. Uh, yeah, That's I mean, right. we have books that we have, um, uh, the cards are available. We have the assessment. Where you can practice it. We have a, a thinking quotient assessment called the TQ. That's right. Which I think we did a po podcast on. Um, we did. We did an episode on that. Um, that you can take and get your strengths and weaknesses. You, we have uh, adva a, 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 a beginning and advanced courses. On all of these concepts. On our network on these yep. concepts. So you can take it all online, self-paced. But it's important like to note to people yeah. that those are not just sort of theoretical, abstract, academic kind of courses. No. They're roll up your sleeves and how am practice. I going to actually learn and practice these things, which yep. is what I'm proud of in terms of our practice, courses. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Practice so that you get real applied skills, uh, thinking skills to yeah. take out in the professional domain. Professional. And don't forget we have the uh, Think You community of practice. Yes. Which is something that is open to people when they take the TQ. So check it out, CabreraLab.org. All right. That's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. See ya. Mm -hmm.